would anyone be willing to share what they wrote about? So something that, if you don't, if it's like, no, Ms. Winger, I can't, this is for your eyes, that's fine. But does anyone have a, a moment that, so what was the stimulus and how did you physically respond to it? Yes, Nathan. Um, sophomore year, I got in that car crash thing where this guy was like, like a convicted felon who like got an assault. And like, it was pretty crazy. But like, I guess adrenaline, because it was like the only time I kind of had to, like, or kind of thought that somebody was going to kill me. So, oh gosh! <laughs> That's an experience! On a side note, also the only time I got close to taking a guy's life in self defense, but. Wait, so there was a car accident and an assault all at the same time? I think exactly at the same time. Good night. Okay, so besides the adrenaline, which that's a part of our endocrine system, and we're not going to look at the endocrine system too much today. We're going to look more at the nervous system. Like, what were some other things that happened to your body? Were you sh maybe a little shaky afterwards? Yeah. Like Did your palms sweat at all? Mm -hmm. Increased breathing? Yeah. Also, all of the things, right? You definitely, I think you mentioned that fight or flight response, but your body was responding, responding quickly. Even when you were driving... <laughs> Um, your ability to try and probably react to the incident and then the things that followed. So there was a stimulus, and yeah, I would have had a very intense response yeah, to that as they well. Asked me to move my car out of the road afterwards, and the police were there. I like couldn't get the parking brake up because I was like my hands were like this. Yeah, no, for sure. Yeah. Super overstimulated, super overworked. Lots of stuff happening in your body. Great yeah. example. So you guys wrote about this intense response, and we want to talk about the why today. How our body communicates. There's two main systems at work the endocrine system and the nervous system. Now, the endocrine system uses messengers like that are hormones, but your nervous system is made up of these neurons. And by the end of class today, I really need you guys to understand the function and structure of a neuron and neural communication. That is what we are attempting. So we will look at the endocrine system on our next face-to-face -face class, but for today's purposes, we're gonna heavily focus on the neuron. So here's what a neuron looks like, you guys. Neurons vary in shape and size, but all have the same structure and communication process. If you look down in your notes, we're going to talk about each of these different parts, and then sometime during class today with a partner, you're going to even label one of these on your own. But let's break down each of the different parts. Let's understand where they're at, what they do, and how they all work together. All right, now it's going to get to the good part. Now we're, now we're going to actually do something with this information. Are you guys ready? Yeah. Yeah? You think so? So everyone, we're going to do a little simulation, and everyone's going to be a part of it. So if you're like, Mrs. Winger, no, I don't do simulations. No, unfortunately, today, you are a part of this simulation. So just be ready. Um, we are going to act like a neuron. And so what this is going to look like, if we think about the main structures and functions, you're all going to be a part of this, and we're going to see if we can successfully perform neural transmission. Okay? Dayton, you're not making eye contact. You know you're going to be a dendrite. Let's go. Get up here. Get up here. This is good stuff. All right, so some people in the back, too. Come around on this side. So one hand on our cell body and one hand out to receive information. Great. This is perfect. We're forming a dendrite, everyone. Excuse me. We have our dendrites. We're forming a neuron. So now the rest of us, what do you think you could be a part of? The You're going to be part of the axon. So what's going to look like is that... You're going to put your arms up. And so everyone, can you put them on my shoulders for a second? Everyone is going to have their hands on the shoulders of the person in front of them. And we're going to make a little, uh, neurons are lots of different shapes and sizes. So you just weave this wherever you need to go, but we all need to be connected. Good. How are we feeling? We feeling like a neuron? Yeah. Awesome. <laughs> Fantastic. So guys, here's what's going to happen next. I am going to come and take some neurotransmitters. Well, let's say dopamine just for funsies. And I'm going to put, if you get a dopamine in your hand, a little crunch, it's not real, okay? I didn't bring drugs to school. <laughs> it's just a wadded up ball of paper, you guys. Everything's gonna be fine. So we're gonna put it in your hand. If you get one in your hand, you need to squeeze the shoulder of your cell body. Once you receive five shoulder squeezes, you are gonna yell fire and squeeze the shoulders in front of you. And then it's gonna go pop, 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 until once you are activated, what do you think you're gonna need to do? What does the terminal button do, you guys? It release the neurotransmitters. You're going to throw those neurotransmitters across the synapse, and hopefully our receiving dendrite is going to catch it. All right? <laughs> Was it making sense? OK. All right. I got to go grab some neurotransmitters, and then we can do this. After we fire, let's see how quickly we can do neural communication. You guys ready? All right, here we go. Be ready. Everybody pay attention. Let's see how well our neural transmission works. Also, Riley, be gentle with your receiving dendrite. Like, give them a chance. <laughs> Yay, we did it! Good job! Give yourself a round of applause. You can take a seat. Awesome work. Thank you, thank you, thank you. I woke up this morning and I was like, I'm 
All right, what I would like you guys to do is with the partner you're sitting next to, just take two minutes, I'll set a timer really quick, go and find the diagram of your neuron and just label it with each other really fast. So depressants, stimulants, opiates, hallucinogens. Those are our four main drug categories that we need to understand how they work at the neural level. So to kind of bring this back one more time, um, we're going we're gonna to revisit our, our simulation, except we're going we're gonna to act like a neuron on drugs. So um, if I could have Khalil and Riley come back up to the front. Riley, you're still going to be my terminal button. So you're still trying to send neurotransmitters across the synapse. And Khalil, you're going to still try and be a dendrite that's going to receive that information. So Riley, if you want to stand right here. And then this will work. This will work. OK, so terminal button receiving dendrite. I got to get, I got to get some of my neurotransmitters, guys. I've been walking around with bags of garbage for a week. And people have to think I'm crazy, but it's for you because I care about you this much. Um, OK, so let's first just practice regular neural um, transmission. So here's just one dopamine. We're going to deal with dopamine. And we're going to see how all these different substances affect dopamine. All right, so normal transmission, always pretend you've been activated. So send it across the synapse. Cleo receives it. Reuptake's going to occur, re occur, so send it back to Riley. Perfect, great. No normal dopamine release. Now, let's say that, let's see, what substance do we want to start with? Ah, let's have, I'm going to be alcohol first. OK, so if I'm alcohol, you guys, what category do I fall under? Depressant. I'm a depressant. Riley, do you mind if I restrain you a bit? Yeah. Great. Also, alcohol isn't that polite. So just remember that in your lives. So same thing, but here we go. <laughs> so, this seems about right. All right, send it back. OK, good. So we can still release the dopamine across, but it's restrained. It is, it's slower to, it's slower to do. Perfect. Now we're going to increase the dopamine even more, and I am going to be cocaine. So you have even more dopamine that you need to get across. But the interesting thing about cocaine, you guys, is it, she can't even keep her dopamine together. She's losing it. Come on, button, you can do this. Just hold on to those. This is why we don't take drugs. All right. But it's going to actually block reuptake. So it will go across, but then cocaine is going to get in the way, and it's going to block Riley from this reuptake. So it's going to stay in the system longer. And Cleo, here's what's going to happen. You're going to try and send it back. I'm going to smack it back at you, and you have to catch it. All right? So reuptake's inhibited. And until I cocaine wear off, guess what? That dopamine is staying in the system, and he's going to be super stimulated for a while. Once that's done, once the cocaine wears off, what do you think that neuron feels like? <sighs> right? There's going to be a crash that follows. And we see this with lots of drugs. It is worn out. It is done. All right, so here we go. Send it across. Get that dopamine over there. Yeah, quick as you can, right? Fast acting. Here we go. Coming. Dopamine in the system. Oh, man. Here we go. You can do it, Riley. That one can just stay on the. Just, just leave it. Just drop. Oh, oh, no. Oh, no. All right, all right. Okay, but now cocaine is in the system. Good luck. No, you have to catch it. You have to receive it back. Okay, okay, okay. We're blocking the uptake here, all right? Great, 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 great. And this is going to keep happening. Just leave it. Just leave it until, right, until the cocaine wears it off. And then I'll get out of the way. Whew. <laughs> cocaine is exhausting. OK. Um, so those dopamine are either going to disintegrate or potentially be reptake. But again, think about how that neuron feels. <laughs> the last drug we're going to look at, you guys, is methamphetamines. So here's this thing with meth. What marijuana or cocaine was doing at the dopamine level, take that and times it by about 1,000. So not only are you going to be stimulated by this neuron releasing natural dopamine, it's just going to flood in, and it's going to keep going. And so meth has this insane high, this almost invincible-like feeling, followed by one of the worst crashes. And we don't have old meth addicts, you guys. You might have an old heroin addict, but meth, is, it doesn't work that way. You look at people who've started meth, right, and then a couple months later what that looks like. But think of, like, we're going to try and show you what's happening at the neurological level. This is why. So as fast as we can, we are going to, you're going to try and get them across, and I am going to flood the system. I'm breaking through that blood-brain barrier. This is going to look like the scene in Elf um, with the snowballs, pretty much. So Khalil? You ready for this? Someone was a dum dum and they did math. Here we go. Go. Just check. Get. Get. Yeah. All. I can't even. I can't even fast enough. It. It is. 
But it is, like, it's just going to keep coming. It doesn't, it just, what? great, great. Leave it. Thank you. Great participant. You can go sit down. Leave, don't even pick it up. Leave it. Math is a mess, you guys. Don't do it. So, as you can see, you can hover over the mice, and this one is on ecstasy. This one is on heroin. This one is on marijuana. And this one is on meth. We also have alcohol, LSD, and cocaine. So what you'll do is, whatever order, you, don't, you can go in the order of the chart or not, but you'll pick up the mouse, you'll put them in the chair, and then it'll take them over. Dopamine transporters are okay, but this, finish this on your own time. Make sure you take care of those different mice. And again, all of this can be found on Power School. Thank you, guys. You did great. Thank you for willing to participate. And hopefully we, feel, we understand neurons and neurotransmission.